The following educational film by GE describes the benefits of using computers in a data processing environment. It describes in simple terms and illustrations how the internal processes of input, storage, calculation, output and control are the core internal functions of a computer and discusses the basics of memory allocation of data elements. The film also shows a variety of GE computer hardware, including the Datanet 30, which could be used as a communications computer or as a front-end processor, attached to the GE 200, GE 400, or GE 600 series of machines. Produced in 1969, it is probably one of their last educational computer films, since GE sold its computer division to Honeywell in 1970. You and the computer meet the needs of a demanding age. The computer, which is several new kinds of machines working as a system, increases your capacity to do work with your intellect. Calculating and writing paychecks is one of the jobs computers do frequently. And although you can't see what goes on in the blue boxes, you can understand the processes just by imagining what you would do to write a paycheck. Now, if you please imagine that you are paymaster of the supersonic hubcap company. Here is your problem. Figure out how much to pay one employee, George Grinder. You first gather the facts, the data you'll need to solve the problem. His rate of pay is $3 an hour. His deductions are 15% for income tax, and one dollar for insurance. George worked 35 hours last week. That's your input, the facts. Next, store them in a handy place. Then, calculate George's gross pay by multiplying the number of hours worked, 35, by his rate of pay, three dollars an hour. That's one hundred and five dollars. Now, the income tax deduction. That's it, $15.75. Subtract this from $105, the gross pay, and you get $89.25. Now subtract $1 for health insurance. Eighty-eight twenty-five is Mr. Grinder's pay. Now write the check. That's output. In arriving at the answer, you performed each step in its proper order. That means you exercised control. The computer performs the same basic five functions. The computer requires input, basic facts or data to work on. It must store this information in a handy place. The computer stores facts in an electronic memory, both data used in solving problem and instructions on how to use the data. Your calculation was done with pencil and paper, or you might have used an adding machine. The computer's calculating or arithmetic unit operates on the same principles as an adding machine. It can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. After you gathered your facts and did the arithmetic, you had the answer. So, you wrote George's paycheck. This was output. Control simply means doing things in proper order. When you work on a problem, you subconsciously do first things first. But the computer needs a program. That is a series of instructions for every step of the job. You don't need a computer to help your brain figure out one man's wages any more than you need a bulldozer to help your muscles smooth out the soil in a window box. But if you are leveling an airport or figuring out the wages for 10,000 employees, the proper machine is a big help. Now, as we watch an actual computer doing its job, try to remember what you did. Input. Output. Hmm, that's all we can actually see. Let's try again. Input, first the program, the series of instructions, is entered. Then the payroll facts.
previously prepared time cards, one for each employee. Both the program and payroll facts go into the memory of the computer. The function of a computer's memory may be represented by rows of pigeonholes or boxes. Each memory location has its own identifying number, an address. Our program instructed the computer to put the first employee's name in address number 11, the hours he worked in 12, his rate of pay in 13, tax percentage in 14, and insurance deduction in 15. The first calculation instructions of the program are take the contents of address 12, hours worked, and multiply it by the contents of address 13, the employee's pay rate. Store the result of this calculation in address 16 while the computer does a couple of other things, such as compute the income tax to be withheld and the insurance deduction. Here's how this happened. The instruction in address 4 said multiply the amount in box 16 by the contents of box 14, which contains the income tax percentage. Then add the insurance deduction to the tax deduction. Now subtract the total of the deductions from the contents of box 16, gross pay, and the machine has take-home pay. Now, output. It writes, you perform the same basic operations as did the computer. The one big difference is speed. The computer has carried out the program, followed instructions in the proper order. The instructions, the program, were loaded in first followed by the facts for the first of the 10,000 supersonic employees. To get the computer started on the payroll, we actually set it on address number one. The computer followed each instruction in its proper order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Instruction eight is reload with the facts for the next employee. Thus, the instructions in the upper boxes are followed repeatedly while fresh payroll facts are loaded each time instruction 8 of the program is reached. All these steps of input, storage, calculation, output, and control are done in fractions of seconds. So the computer can calculate the wages and write paychecks for 10,000 persons in a very small period of time. When all 10,000 employees have been paid, you remove the payroll instructions from the computer's memory and store them for future coded form on cards or tape. Then you put in a different set of instructions for a different job. It might be a program that decides how many hubcaps Supersonic should manufacture in the next month based on facts such as sales reports and inventories instead of hours worked and rate of pay. In all manner of businesses and professions, the computer solves problems in the same methodical step-by-step -step manner a human would solve the same problem. It follows instructions in the order given and calculates the same way a conscientious human would, by adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. But the computer is a machine, and the human who understands it makes it do what he wants done, steers it with instructions. With a computer, a trained person can move a bigger block of mental work in an afternoon than he could in a lifetime with paper and pencil. Small wonder challenging new careers are opening for intelligent young people who know how to put the computer to work.